Noam Chomsky was speaking with Russell Brand and he began to talk about the topic of the United States imposing constraints on freedom to the access of information and sources. I want you to take a look at this. Now take the United States today. It is living under a kind of totalitarian culture which has never existed in my lifetime and is much worse in many ways than the Soviet Union before Gorbachev. Go back to the 1970s, uh, people in Soviet Russia could access BBC, Voice of America, uh, German television, if they wanted to find out the news. If today in the United States, you want to find out what Prime Minister Lavrov of Russia is saying, can't do it, it's barred. Americans are not permitted to hear what Russians are saying. Can't get Russian television, can't access Russian sources. That means also that fine American journalists like Chris Hedges, one of the best, is cut out, barred from Americans, because he happens to have a program running on RT, Russian television. You want to find out what the adversary is saying, which is of utmost importance. You can maybe tune into Indian state television and find it out, or you can read it on Al Jazeera. But uh, the United States has imposed constraints on freedom of access to information, which are astonishing, and which in fact go beyond what was the case in post-Stalin Soviet Russia. Incredible. And it doesn't take a genius to see, to understand, to discern the current state of events that we are dealing with. And it, of course, doesn't only pertain to this situation in the Ukraine. It uh, pertains to a vast array of issues uh, spanning across the entire spectrum. You just pick one, an issue where there's a situation and the U.S., through the power that it has and uh, its media ecosystem that it controls, is able to filter, to sift through the information that's being supplied to the people and only supply what they would like them to know, uh, uh, facts that don't give you the entire situation. Sometimes it's not even facts, it's just, uh, or most of the times it's just plain propaganda and nonsense, which is what we're getting uh, from the situation in Ukraine, if you watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox, all these mainstream news outlets, which are just propaganda arms of the uh, government, they don't do anything but parrot the narrative of the West and of NATO. And as Mr. Chomsky outlined in that short clip that we watched together, they don't allow you to see what the quote unquote enemies are saying, what the bad people are saying. They don't even want you to be able to perceive their perspective because they consider it dangerous. First of all, anything that comes out of their mouths by they I'm referencing the enemies. In this case, I guess the quote unquote enemy would be Putin or Russia or any of their officials, Lavrov or whoever else. By definition, anything that comes out of their mouth is propaganda. It's misinformation. It's nonsense. It's instantly deemed that as soon as it leaves their mouths. But anything that the West says, that the leaders of NATO say, that an official from Europe says, or Germany, or whoever else, or Finland, or Sweden, the new NATO come-uppers, anything that they say is, of course, fact, and we must accept it as so. And uh, as insignificant as it may be, uh, I've been engaged in multiple conversations surrounding this, and I experience the same thing, and I'm sure many other people do as well, that don't fall in line with the mainstream thinking as it pertains to not j just this issue, but many other issues. And I've always found it quite interesting in American culture. Of course, there are many of us that understand what's going on and see it for what it is, but there are many others in the same breath that can't even fathom the thought of being propagandized in their own country that their uh, media ecosystem at their government is a denying them information and b not giving them correct or accurate information and they like to point at places like look at what's going on in north korea with the control look at the china look at uh venezuela iran and uh, all of this and 
But what's going on here at home in America is in many cases, as Noam Chomsky pointed out there very eloquently, much more sinister and ominous than what's going on anywhere else that we can point to. He pointed out RT. They basically wiped it from the face of the earth. I used to watch RT. I watched Chris Hedges content on RT. Really decent network. Uh, Sputnik um, was censored, another Russian outlet. Uh, what they're doing with CGTN, a Chinese controlled media ecosystem. Uh, Press TV uh, out of Iran. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, but they would like to have you believe that no, you're getting the truth and, and nothing but the truth and anything that comes from anywhere else, any differing perspective from the views and ideals that we espouse is nonsense, should be castigated as disinformation and propaganda, and that's the end of the story. And as we have been seeing, uh, the U.S. Uh, do essentially what Chomsky was outlining there, that video put constraints on the freedom of access to differing sources. Um, actually, I want to pause for a second and draw out a very quick example before I go on any further. Look at what's currently happening with Julian Assange. They're trying to destroy him for exposing war crimes, among many other things, of the state, of the U.S. government. Why would they need to destroy a man for performing such heroic acts if they cared so much about journalistic freedom, about freedom of the press, of sources, and they didn't crack down and impose these draconian restraints on uh, media and on sources and everything else. It, it's, it's a very big contradiction. But moving in, lock, in, lock step, in lockstep with the U.S. government and NATO and their Western allies and their censorship and control over these things is the government in Ukraine. I would like to read you something from Unheard to bolster this point. It's a very, very stark and ominous similarity. The Ukraine government issued blacklist of what they deem, quote, Russian propagandist. Yes. Let's get into this a little bit. I'll read you just a little bit of this. The Center for Countering Disinformation, established in 2021 under Vladimir Zelensky and headed by former lawyer Polina Lysenko, sits within the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. Its stated aim is to detect and counter propaganda and destructive information and to prevent the manipulation of public opinion. That sounds extremely familiar. On July 14th, it published on its website a list of politicians, academics, activists that are promoting Russian propaganda, including several high pro profile Western intellectuals and politicians. Republican Senator Rand Paul, former Democratic Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, military and geopolitical analyst Edward N. Lutwak, realist political science uh, scientist John Mearsheimer and heterodox journalist Glenn Greenwald were all included on the list. The list does not explain what the consequences for anyone mentioned. And as this also points out, the exact criteria for inclusion are also unclear. Although next to each name, the report lists the pro-Russian opinions the individual promotes. And they give an example of Mr. Edward. His breach was suggesting that referendums should be held in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. That, that's it. And this guy, Mr. Edward here, was actually calling for more arms and weapons and money to go into Ukraine to fuel the war effort. But because he stepped out of line and recommended that a referendum be held in these two specific regions, he's a Russian propagandist, he's an ally of the Kremlin, he serves uh, Vladimir Putin, it, 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 it's so insanely fanatical. You know, people that have the benign opinion that Russia will not be defeated, and correctly so, will not be defeated in Ukraine. They will not defeat the powerful Russian military, and Vladimir Putin will not be overthrown by his own people as the crazed fantasies of the warmongers in Congress would have you believe. If you simply say something as simple and correct and benign as that, you're castigated as, uh, you know, a, a, um, a Putin ally, a person that sympathizes with the regime, a person that's calling for the death of Ukrainians or whatever else. And it's insanely ridiculous. But these are the types of blames that are cast against people that have a differing opinion. And to pivot back to what uh, Chomsky said, 
as it pertains to the Soviet, that's exactly what they, our government has been telling us and continues to tell us up until this point. They point to places like the old Soviet uh, Russia, you know, say that look at the control on speech and everything else. And they point to other places that I alluded previously when here, as I said, they're doing something much more sinister, much more ominous. But apparently many of us have yet to wake up to what is unfolding before our very eyes.